It runs over 1,900 miles from the Gulf of Mexico to the Pacific Ocean, but only about a third of it is actually fenced off. We're talking about the U.S.-Mexico border, and it's dividing America in half. There's the open border lobby, which opposes common sense immigration reform, like added border security and building a wall, than the rest of America that wants national security first. The state of California has become a battleground for the immigration debate because of its sanctuary laws. And so we traveled to San Diego, a neighboring U.S. city to Tijuana, Mexico. And there we met Chris Harris, who served as a Border Patrol agent for 20 years and who would be our guide along the southern border. The Tijuana River is one of our first stops along the border. This is where the need for reform really begins to sink in. It's an area seldom heard of in the media, but has become an environmental nightmare. The river serves as a natural boundary separating Mexico and the United States, and acts as a symbol for several of the issues plaguing our broken immigration system. In the brief time we were there, we saw numerous deportees traversing the dried riverbed, drug addicts, the homeless, repeat border crossers, unafraid of the border patrol agents. This is the Tijuana River. Uh, this is where it flows into the U.S. from Mexico. It's called the Channel. Uh, there is no wall or fence there. That yellow line is the border. They walk right in. As you can see, and, and we saw a little earlier, people wandering around. They've just entered the United States. Most of them are what we call deportados, what they call in Mexico. Those are the deportees. They've be gone before an immigration judge and actually gotten a real, you are deported. Um, the Mexican government used to make some effort to reintegrate them back into society. They're, they're citizens. They're Mexican citizens. They would fly them back to the pueblos or towns they came from. They don't really do that anymore. The impact on the environment from pollution coming across from Mexico is striking. The river is a blackish green and filled with sewage and chemical waste. You can see hypodermic needles laying on the ground and even human feces. This area presents a huge threat not only to the environment and the deportees who live there, but also to the Border Patrol agents, agents like Chris, who put their life on the line to protect us. The areas along the border filled with huge amounts of trash and waste is stunning. Some of it is left by illegal aliens coming across the border, but the majority of it is runoff from Tijuana because of the city's poor regulation of sewage and chemical waste. The worst of the worst was in Goats Canyon, where it burns to breathe. There's a trickle coming through now. Uh, up until just a week ago, it was a heavy flow every day. Um, if this bothers you, let me know. We can move. I, um, this is where our supervisor agent had to go to the hospital for methane and hydrogen sulfide burns. Um, but this is what, can't, what, what comes through. This is, look at the color. It's like green. That's not green from like good algae. Uh, we put these grates here uh, a few years ago because the smuggling group that ran this area, that this was their, their, their corridor, their MO was to put people through on 10 speeds. And they would be with the, the latex on, looking to go there to go into the Tour de France. So we'll open these when it rains. This will flood through, but I've got videos of non-rain, no rain for months, and flows going through. The pollutants in some parts are so bad the Border Patrol agents have gotten sick or even received chemical burns from wading into the toxic brew. The chemicals eat through their boots and then into the agent's skin. This is just one of the many risks for the Border Patrol. It really is a matter of life and death at times. Our guide, Chris, was attacked by a group of illegal aliens who hopped across the border fence. This is where he almost lost his life. In 2006, this was a different area. This was all high grass here. The road was over that way and narrower. I, I left the, early, the area early in the morning to go out, get a pack of cigarettes. Uh, I came back and I was really paying attention to the area and I saw some movement in the high grass. I drove off the road right here up to the panel, this panel right here on the fence. Uh, four guys jumped up. Uh, I was able to grab one, kind of throw him on the ground. I put my foot on his back, not hard, just enough to keep him in place. The other three jumped up on top of the fence. Uh, one jumped down in New Mexico, and I guess he ran off. Uh, there was two on top of the fence. Uh, one I recognized as the smuggler, and the other one was his trainee, his on-the-job training uh, smuggler. 
Uh, they were screaming at me in English and Spanish to let the guy go that I had arrested um, or that I was holding. Uh, I, I struck the, the fence with my, my collapsible steel baton. They dropped down um, to the south side. Um, at that time, the guy on the ground started trying to struggle with me. Um, I went down, bent down to hook him up to, to handcuff him, uh, and that was a tactical error on my part. When the, uh, the smuggler and his trainee jumped down onto the south side, for some reason in my head I perceived that they were no longer a threat, they were out of the picture. Um, but when I bent down to, to hook the guy up, the smuggler got to on top of the fence again um, and, and had a, a rock about the size of a softball and threw it down as hard as he could on the top of my head. Um, I subsequently had some severe injuries from that over the years, especially traumatic brain injury, uh, massive headaches, uh, depression, um, anxiety attacks, panic attacks, post-traumatic stress, all that. Um, I was able to, to arrest the guy that uh, somehow got handcuffs on the guy that I was uh, holding. I was able to pull the weapon out. Everything had grayed out. I was on my knees, uh, pointed at the smuggler, and he dropped down. At that time, he ran off. Uh, we weren't able to catch him then. Um, it kind of speaks to why we're so assaulted. They can kind of assault us uh, with relative impunity from Mexico. It's a sovereign nation. We can't chase them. But it also speaks of that the fence is so low. It's an eight-foot fence. I kid and say that a, an asthmatic eight-year-old can climb the fence. It was very easy for the smuggler to drop down, to get a rock and climb back up and, and injure me with that rock. Um, in other areas of the country, they've injured even more severely other agents. Um, sometimes people try to portray it as they're little kids throwing little rocks. This was a grown man throwing a softball-sized rock. Yeah, I worked back off a gate, FYI. And it's up the opposite side. It's very nice snorting glue. Just heads up. 10-4, Robert. Uh, thanks for the FYI. Uh, keep an eye out. So when they snort glue, they can become violent. Chris was fortunate enough that day to make it through, but there have been many Border Patrol agents who didn't. Between the constant threat of violence from illegal aliens, the strain on their mental health, and environmental hazards, Border Patrol agents make a lot of personal sacrifices. Chris is all too familiar with sacrifice and loss. He has seen many of his fellow agents die. One of those agents was Catherine M. Hill. Catherine was a senior Border Patrol agent who was assigned to Smuggler's Gulch. In the early morning of October 25, 2002, her patrol car rolled over the edge of a cliff and she was found dead at the scene. It's a tragedy that continues to haunt the Border Patrol in the San Diego sector. And we just had another, another um, memorial service here last November. Interestingly enough, I was doing a border tour and a lady asked me uh, that she, if she could bring an attorney friend of hers who didn't like us and if that was okay. And I said, I love it. Bring somebody you don't like. And after hearing this, um, she was so moved that she sent us two flags to fly over Kathy's memorial when that flag gets, gets worn out. There are many problems along this portion of the border, but there are solutions as well. We were lucky enough to get an exclusive look at the eight border wall prototypes that have been erected near the Ote Mesa border crossing. The wall has become a symbol of national debate, but seeing firsthand the issues that plague the border and the border patrol, you realize there's no debate.